emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello, gang. Colin here. Festa 67's workshop. Should we paint our ball tank? Uh, yeah. So I'll just have a quick move around on the bench. Start getting ready to set me spray booth up. A couple of people have asked to see this little bit because they uh, they heard the rumour that um, my extractor system runs under me bench and a couple of fellas want to do the same with theirs. So I said I'd film this little bit for them. So I just literally moved me stuff out of the way. And then my Bruce Willis that's in the background there, my pen pot, I then lift out of the way so that it reveals the um, container slot for the air hose. So I'll just pull that out of the way, like so. See. And if you look in the corner, you'll see the white rectangle. And that's the down tube to put that little bad boy in. See, so that now all fit onto the ring on the back of me spray booth. Now these little spray booths are a godsend, but I haven't got the space to keep it set up permanently like a lot of folks. So I just quickly turn the adapter on the back there, like so, and that will do a, a round fitment straight into the uh, round adaptment adapter even. And that runs under me bench and then up the wall and straight out an air vent on the wall. So, yeah. And then on the outside of the wall of the, the house, there's a little uh, louvered vent that this extracts out into, into, the, into the real world. So, yeah, that's how that works. So I'll just quickly fit this all together and click it in place and we'll have a spray booth set up. So, yeah, it does make a difference to me because it's nice and small, it's nice and compact and pretty much does what it says on the tin, if I'm honest. So we'll carry on and just put the, the sides up and get prepared and I'm going to be priming on this today. So I'll um, be prepping a bit of UMP primer and I'll be putting it through me pistol brush which is on the, on the uh, cutting matches there. So we've had a move around to the camera angle for you just so that you can see what I'm up to. I'll just move the microphone down so that I can talk to you. Uh, and there's the bits and bobs already on the cocktail sticks uh, or, the, or the skewers that I'm going to be painting. Now these little skewers I made myself. I've got a big bag of clips and a bag of barbecue skewers and sat there with a pair of pliers. Yeah, you guessed the rest. Put the clips on and voila. Saved me a small fortune it did. So I'll just pop these out of there and lay them all down. And this is all the stuff that is going to get uh, the grey primer on. The other frame that is getting a different colour is just off shot on the left. And that will be getting a, another layer up in of a different colour. So, yeah. So we'll just move that out of the way. Um, and then I'll be putting the bits and pieces in that as I paint them just to the left there. Alright. So we've got a bit of UMP primer in there that I've shaken. And I'm running this at about 14 PSI at the moment. Just misting the primer on. It's a nice, easy flowing primer and does the job. Just drop a little bit of red in there on the frame and get that done. That's a different airbrush there. That's Excalibur. That's a little H&S airbrush. So, yeah. You don't need masses and masses of uh, alloy spray. It is literally paint in the cup, switch it on and spray it. Sorry about the gratuitous <laughs> back of my head shot there folks. But I built this in such a way that I could pop the tyre off once I joined the four sections together so that I can get in and do all the, all the little greebly bits and then I shall weather this off the tank. Get it all weathered and gnarly and chipped and all of that lot and then it'll all start popping together as a, a later assembly piece. So I'll grab that on there like so. 
finish that off and get all the little uh, crooks and nannies and then we'll uh, do a deft bit of airbrush cleaning on this stage ready for the next stage like so so something a little bit different here uh, we had the idea on the e-models live show a couple of weeks ago to do a live at the bench build on this show and uh, for those watching later it was the um, early June show so um, this footage was screen captured off of that and um, this is the part where I was showing the uh, red part of the internals and the tyre to the viewers and then I am going to be painting um, a light green base over the entire outer shell of the tank and then this will then be having a layer of chipping fluid over it and then I'll put in the white um, top coat that you can see in the picture just to the bottom left there so it'll go over this green and then the edges will be chipped and, and uh, yeah exposed just to sort of show that it's a white over green paint so whilst we was doing the live show and goofing around um yeah i, I did a bit of deft spray in here i think fox and ted bless them managed to glue all of two pieces together uh, me and Chris, like the pair of school swats we are, we, we were sort of beavering away with the airbrushes or whatever, and uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, you'll see me now. I'm just going to be deftly going over this with a, a bit of green paint. So some of the footage is going to be sped up and, and edited and that. But, um, yeah, we're just going over the um, interior part of the doors there. And like I say, I use little tiny circular motions on this because it is a, a a compound curve so to speak so I'm just doing like miniature spirals as I'm painting it just to try to get paint in in every little area there and then it'll have a mist coat over the top of that just to capture any pieces that I may or may not have missed so I will be doing that apologies if it's just under my hand there but uh, yeah I had the iPhone sort of behind me right shoulder so it was a bit hit and miss what footage I would end up with on this one but I think you'll see enough of what I'm doing see so I'm just like I say doing the little tiny circles around the edges and then I build into the middle and then I close off the grey primed area last in the middle there and then it'll have a little mist over the top and that'll be painted up then and that's all we're doing on this one for this uh, this little part of the episode is just laying down the green base and it was one of those um, we hit on the idea of doing this on the live show sort of pretty last minute and those of us that had e-models builds grabbed them and, and, and got on with them so Apologies for the delay in this episode, but I kind of wanted to voice over everything because, yeah, we were goofing around like a load of women, and, uh, yeah, we're a bunch of princesses, us four, when we get together, but it is quite funny. So I'm going to do the same on the inside here, just little circular motions to try to capture all the edges of any frames or mountains or fixings that are inside the tank the radiator and the fuel tanks etc i'll just drop that clip off to hold it there by the uh, shock absorber and um, as you remember rightly in the last episode when i showed you how i was doing the guns all the ball sections will pop in them rings and uh, be held in place quite nicely so i'm going to put a little uh, worn silver in a ring around them so it looks like they've worn as the thing's been turning around you'll probably never see that um, but it's like anything us modelers know it's there don't we so again this is having the green base color and then it'll um, add some chipping effects on bits and detritus and dirt and dust and, and all of that lot over it but uh, I think major major it'll be predominantly on the bottom half of it where the uh, tank operators feet would have been 
so if they've been out and had a quick smoke or whatever in the outside where they've come in and got back in the tank there's going to be sort of ground detritus uh, or a bit of a bit of dampness or from snow or whatever and it'll just start eroding the paint surface so nothing too heavy on the web rim but just enough and again bear in mind there's only going to be one door open on this so yeah you're not going to see a lot of it so mind you saying that I might do both doors open I don't know I haven't decided yet so we'll carry on painting this outer, outer shell section and when I come to join this I've got to connect all the radiator pipes and I've had a look at the instructions and it does look like a, a bit of an octopus moment where you need more than two hands but I might have devised a way of doing it so I'll have a go and we'll figure that out but I think I can tape the outer shell on with the tire off and then attach the hose one end on the radiator with a bit of the extra fin let it go off and then pop the shell off and the pipe should stay in its place but again we'll do the same here little circular motions all around the outer circumference of this uh, shell there and it's, it's like anything because you're doing a compound curve I just find it easier for myself spraying in this pattern and uh, yeah it stops it streaking and it also stops the paint sort of building up at the lower edge there I just do little little circular motions and then once the bulk of the area is done I then mist over everything and uh, it blends it together quite nicely so yeah like I say we was uh, picking on each other quite mercilessly that night predominantly me and Chris ganged up on Fox and Ted because Ted had just <laughs> Ted had just come back off or come off the back of doing his own live stream and he had managed I think in an hour and a half to glue two pieces together so we were mocking him profusely on that one folks I'm afraid but it is quite entertaining so that's that bit done normally I would have me spray booth set up um, on my bench there that you saw in the first half of this episode but this was the live broadcast and I kind of didn't want the big sound of the extractor going so I muted my microphone in the end and put me um, respirator on and did it that way so yeah hence the voiceover so we'll do the same on this one little circular motions right round the bottom edge there and just keep popping it around and remember if you are using this technique put the lid on your airbrush pot because yeah it, it can spill out but uh, I've got very minimal paint in mine at the moment I tend to when I'm doing these just put a tiny little bit of paint in as I need it but the lid still goes on it just stops any accidents again you like I say the circular motions out all the way around get myself caught up in the arrows there and then uh, just drop that round there and then I've got all the uh, ammunition to paint and that as well so I shall get that painted later on in this episode get the, the paint brushes out and the wet palette and we can uh, we can sit and do a bit of uh, nice quiet brush painting and for those of you that haven't made a wet palette I'll quickly go over when I do that piece on uh, how I made me wet palette and uh, yeah comes in handy so that's what we'll be doing on that and it will just let us get some of the detail in but for the moment getting the base green down is what we want to achieve on this and I actually didn't think I'd managed to get all of this done on the live show because it did, de <laughs> it did degenerate somewhat and uh, yeah, we may have misbehaved sorry Peter <laughs> just quickly clean the tip off my airbrush there lovely and that's the beauty of these ones they've got uh, a pinch tip on them so you can just run your fingers down there and give it get any paint off but yeah 
uh, I was getting a bit of chip dry on it because as you can see you keep stopping because you're you're chatting to Fox or Chris or the viewers or whatever and you're like yeah but uh, yeah so we'll just carry on with this and uh, I think someone was asking um, the uh, question about the airbrush there uh, what airbrush it was and it was a uh, harder and thing back infinity so uh, yeah we can get on with that just grab the other bits and bobs and bring them a bit closer because they'll be getting a coat any any minute So we'll uh, just give that a little increase of pressure because I've been chatting. So we'll carry on and get this finished. Like so. There's a little bit of spray in there. A little bit on the edges there. Just a quick mist round on there. Hey, lovely jubbly. Have you some of that? So I'll just put that in the pot, stop that falling over, and we'll grab some of the little bits now, and we'll start hopefully speeding through them if I can uh, just put a little bit more paint in, I think. Have a little looky loot. Yeah. And then uh, we've got the door done now. So let's just grab that. Just a couple of little bits there I've spotted that just need a little second coat over them. Just to capture the edges. Yeah, there you go. I'm happy then now. It's just over where it's on the left there. I just caught the light and it just showed a little bit of the primer still in a couple of areas. So, so it was handy just to sit there and let the paint start drying. And you've got, you've got the stuff just to one side of you and you can spot then any areas that you may have missed as the paint is drying. So... That's why we tend to sort of do a few mist coats and, and bits and bobs. And then what I'll do on this now, see, is I can get the airy stick out and just start doing a bit of, I would say light dry brushing, but I'm going to go quite heavy on some of this. Just to get a, a chunk of silver down and then I shall go back over it uh with some of the red and dry brush the red red on top of the silver just to give that illusion of wear it's a bit of a Heath robinson way of doing it i know but it's just it works for me there's more than one way to skin a cat so to speak so uh, i'm just going to go around some of the engine sections and things like that and some of the posts and chair edges and as ted would say i'll uh I oh, will slap it on and um slap it on yeah cheers ted and get that sorted out come around the edges of the frames like that and again this red is the uh red oxide undercoat of uh the top coat of the tank which is again going to be a variant of the green so uh, you're not going to see all of the red poking through it's just going to be bits and pieces of it but yeah so there's going to be various different different steel colors and, and things on there where bits and pieces have been painted the engine might have been painted a slightly different color and and that so but as a base coat it was just nice to put a red oxide primer down all the illusion of a red oxide and then uh, all the other different uh, paint call outs can go over the top of it and that's all going to be brush painted on but I want to put a complete layer of chipping fluid on all of this before I do the top coat then that way I can go back in and then um, activate it with water in the places that I want to chip paint off so Hence why I'm not too worried about being too heavy with the um, silver dry brushing. Because it's not the finished uh, layer, it's, it's sort of underneath. So That's what we're trying to achieve anyway. Or, yeah, having a go at trying to achieve then, should we say, Festa, yeah. So, we'll carry on with that. And we'll just 
slather some of that around the chair area around the edges of the frame where the tire is going to be rubbing get that on there and I'm tempted to try and uh, 3D print some figures for this so that there's some activity going on people sat in there so I need to work on that and get that sorted so there will be uh, a little um, session on that coming up because I think it needs a little bit of life around it uh, it's going in a diorama anyway in the woods so you wouldn't have a tank without any crew in the middle of the woods I would have thought so I'm going to need to do something just to try to bring it to life or tell its story and this is going to go back to the guys at E-Model so I'm aware with <laughs> with Ted doing his sub uh, before and now he's doing his Titanic and Fox is doing a big Falcon. Poor old Pete's going to be short of space up there. So this will probably go on a, a little A4 size dio just to try to keep it as compact as I can. I might even go smaller with the dio yet. I haven't. I haven't finally decided on the dimensions. I'll have a look at the tank and look at. Uh, how big the finished article is and uh, I'll put it on the cutting mat on a sheet of paper and then I'll look at it and go right okay let's think a diorama and um, try and keep something within proportion but also compact enough that Pete ain't got to worry about masses of masses of space so I'm just putting a, believe it or not I'm putting a little bit of silver down on a rubber tyre for a reason it's just uh, where the two surfaces would meet perhaps you would get a little bit of silver paint coming off or, or whatever but but yeah and then I'm going and back over that with a bit of tyre black just to give that uh, effect there so Again, once this is dry, I'm then going to go over the tyre with some chipping fluid and stipple it with the same white that the tank out has painted with. But I'm going to have it worn off because obviously a rubber track with paint, it's going to literally peel off. But where they've painted it in the field, they literally painted everything because, yeah, they might have had a bit too much of the Russian vodka. I've um, been a little bit drunk, so yeah. So I'm just going to slather the paint across the treads of this tyre, like so. Get that dump. So that can go out the way. And then let's have a little looky loo as to what we got there. A little bit of clear coat. Uh, yeah, and then we can. Uh, go back over now with a bit more of the brushed aluminium and I'll stipple that on the tea towel there yeah I know it's the world's scuzziest tea towel but it's not as scuzzy as Paul's, uh, Paul Stewart's cutting mat <laughs> but um, yeah I'll just use a little bit of tea towel and I'll just quickly go over the pulleys and the leading edge give it a rub with me fun just to create a little <coughs> excuse me a little wear um, pattern where the uh, tyre has been rubbing against it but this is at a, a coat of pledge between the uh, red and the f uh, second layer of silver just so that it it can get in the nooks and crannies so to speak uh, so we'll just slather some of that over there and the beauty of doing this is it captures all the little bolt heads at different angles and stuff like that. So it just gives everything a little bit of edge wear. Because, you know, they might have had the spanners out and had to unchange a pulley or something like that. So you're going to have paint ripped off of the bolt heads where the spanners have been put on. And Yeah. Obviously the soldiers climbing up the tubing to get into their seats you're going to have footwear on the edges of the tube in each side of the chair and if they've worked on the engine you're going to have sort of tool marks and scratches and, and all of that so hence why when I made it I, I, I built the four sections of the tyre on the model 
but I'd done it in such a way that it still turned and then when everything had cured <clears throat> it enabled me to pop this inner ring back out so that I could do what I'm doing now all the, all the paint so if you are building it just bear that in mind you might think it's strange how Festa Pops is doing it but this stage has made it so much easier for me and it will do for you because you'll be able to get in while whilst wearing your OptiVisor and you'll be able to detail paint everything and uh, yeah because I thought about doing it uh, by painting everything first then trying to do the tyre but I thought trying to lose the seams around the areas where you've got paint you're still gonna have trouble blending it so I thought I'd try it this way and see how it goes and I'm gonna do it exactly the same way when I build my next ball tank so yeah it worked for me to so try it have a look in the area previous episode and you'll see me putting the tyre on with the elastic band bear in mind all you want to do is you just want to keep turning the, the inner frame so that it keeps moving and then as the glue goes off it won't stick to the tank see and uh, yeah you'll then be able to pop the ring out but give it a couple of days or, uh, before you pop the ring out I know the glue dries quick but I left it 48 hours anyway just to let everything be super dry and, and cooked into place so to speak and then you just want to lightly start popping the ring and it'll pop out from the top first and then it'll want to spin round, let it spin round so that you've then got the inner ring at 90 degrees to the tyre and then you just put your thumb on the engine block give it a press and it'll pop straight out and it enables you then to do what I'm doing now which is getting all the little bars, the pulleys and all of that and weather the hell out of it bearing in mind you're only, gonna, <laughs> you're only gonna be looking at this through an inch and a half opening but yeah well, we know it's there and that's the beauty of this hobby is you know we do all of this detail work and probably most of it's not going to be seen by the guy at the counter who's waiting for e models to bring his model to him he's going to glimpse down and see it and go oh, look there's that bolt tank that that bald headed bloke built Whereas, like I say, there might be one or two armour builders that will see the doors open. Oh, I'll just have a quick look in there. Oh, yeah, I'll see what he's done there. So, yeah. You know, and they might even ask the guy <coughs> serving them, oh, can you just pop that out so I can have a look at it? And, uh, yeah, so they'll be able to have a closer inspection of Fester's rather decent work, I hope. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll just quickly do the last leading edge of that and then I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. Um, change me set up a little bit and, and, and dig out my wet palette and we'll come back with a bit of um, detail brushing I think. Because I'm looking out the corner of my eye at the radiator there knowing that that's got to be done in steel and a few bits and pieces and I want to go in and do the pulleys and wear them down so... I'll probably give this another coat of clear uh, to protect this layer from the next layer so I'll be doing uh, a few gloss coats here and there on a few areas to where I know I'm going to be doing another layer and that's just my own preference there so we're just literally flicking this now at the edges of the frame so I'm gonna just get into that little piece there and then we'll call the silver done just rub that little bit off there Festa We're a little too mad but again I'll be flicking bits of red bits of silver bits of red bits of silver just to try and look as if it's been touched up painted over the years and they've gone and scratched it again so it's just to trick the eye into maintenance has been done and it all tells a story, doesn't it? Not approvingly. There you go. Yeah, you know it makes sense. Yeah, so we can just pop that over there out of the way. And is there anything else that could do with a, a little flick? Not really. So we'll clean this and then we'll come back with the wet palette. See you in a minute. Right, we'll start a bit of dry brushing now on the inner frame. 
So <clears throat> I'm going to put a bit of aluminium on the engine block. Now this is model colour aluminium. It's one of their metal colour uh, dropper bottle paints. And I'm just putting this on as a base at the moment on the engine just to get something on there. And then I'll probably go over it with a aluminium pigment just to give it a bit more uh, of a metal finish so to speak so this is just a base coat so it's going to have a few brush strokes in it here and there but I'm not worried about that because it could create sort of texture scratches that sort of thing so I'm going to leave them in there and then when I put the pigment on top hopefully that will then settle in a few places and just give me them undulations I want in the uh, engine finish so a few of the wheels are going to have some of this on them as well in a few places so again when I rub some of the pigment powder off you'll have some lighter tones of uh, aluminium showing through so I'm just going to randomly pick out little bits and pieces around this uh, bolt heads, wear areas where perhaps feet have climbed up on beams and rubbed uh, paint and, and texture off over time so there's going to be quite a few layers of different things going on and you know this is where your, your fingers come in handy because you can put a paint on and then you can quickly rub across it and your fingerprint will leave a few grooves, lines, lands or whatever you want to call them in the texture it just adds a little bit of feel to the paint so that's all we're going to be doing uh, on these and yeah it's really therapeutic I find you just sit there with a, a wet palette and your paint brushes and you just start going round almost getting to know the model in a kind of strange way that's how I think about it I mean we build them and we we tend to slather the paint on with an airbrush and pretty much you don't have a close-up feel for the kit but I find when you sit there with a bit of uh, a wet palette going on and some detail brushes and your OptiVisor yeah you kind of get to know the kit again and yeah you, you begin to feel it almost I think a lot of modelers can relate that um, you begin to feel a build coming in taking shape and, and you form this bond with it and that's the stage we're at now I'm just getting to know this one and I've you know I've bought it a few martinis and I'm painting a bit on the engine and and showing it a bit of TLC and uh, beginning to get a vibe for it so we'll be playing around with um, the brush painting for the remainder of this episode um, and getting some of these little bits done uh, ready for when I put on the chipping fluids and things like that in the next episode for some of the top coat so kind of want to get some of this done and we'll see see what we end up with at the end of the episode as to, to how far we get with it and then obviously um, if I need to do any more sort of touch up detail work with a brush then I'll um, inject that into the, the videos as we go along just to break it up a little bit but this is that sort of painty painty stage now um, I've finally sort of um, settled on my diorama idea so I'm getting me bits together for that so hopefully we can uh, dedicate an episode to the build up of the diorama and then we'll do some painting, weathering and cobble, cobble the uh, tank on the diorama and uh, see what we come up with. I'm still playing with figures, I've got some ideas of what I want, it's just, yeah it's just getting them. So I'm just going to quickly put a little bit of alum aluminium in some areas of the pipe and then uh, that will be the the stuff that shows through when I buff the um, pastes off so I'll probably put paste on shortly for the radiator and the cowling and, and things like that so just finish that off with a little bit of aluminium there just around the areas I think where 
I mean, you would open the door, you would grab the pipe to, to almost use it as a handle to get yourself in and out the side of the tank. So I can imagine if they've had gloves on or rings on or anything like that on their fingers, then, you know, that would have scratched the pipe and, and bright aluminium start showing through. So we'll clean the brush off and then we'll dig out um, some pigments. So I'll have them just just to me left there and I'll be dipping the brush in randomly and putting them in. But they're little um, Agama pigments that I use just for this stage. In case people are wondering, um, I'm going to ship an e-models email to see whether they'll start stocking them because they are nice little pigments. There are other equivalents there, but these are what I've got to hand at the moment. And they're just something I thought would emphasise the build a little bit for me. And yeah, so I'm just going to go around the edges of the cowling like so. Just come around the face of it like that and let that start drying. And then I'll go in and do the matrix with the same. And then I can highlight that with a, a panel wash later on in the build when I weather the fan blades and the edges of the cowling. But this is just to get the pigment on, let it dry, and then I can go at it with a cotton bud and, and start polishing it up because it gives me a nice, a nice metal finish. I mean, this is a, a burnished steel that I'm putting on, um, and it's it's almost like a brown a brown steel or an adenized steel you know it's just got some colors that come through once you start buffing them up and they are reasonably realistic so i thought i would uh, go that little bit extra for them because you know they're good guys the e-models team and uh, i wanted to just put a little bit of tlc into it so we've got that coming along nicely you can see so we might as well put some of this down as a base on the suspension legs as well because there will be some chipping fluid going over it and the white top coat will go on and then I'm gonna chip it away to expose this metal finish in, in a few places and I'll probably do the same with the grill vents as well I'll probably put some of this on them so that again I can go at the uh, grill vents with the brushes and, and cocktail sticks when I've put the chipping on and chip it off and expose this again so that's that's kind of why these are getting a full larrapin at the moment uh, like I say uh, bits of paint will be coming off where it's knocked and, and chipped and yeah and again I'm just flicking the brush at it just to give it a bit of scratch texture and yeah because the bristle lines actually do make good scratches on these um, things so yeah and I know they're a what if build these little ball tanks but I would love it if they had existed the fun you could have in one of these especially especially in the modern age because there are a lot of people that collect armour you know, there's enthusiasts and museums and, and places like that. But, you know, imagine it. Belting round tank fest in a ball tank. <laughs> be a right laugh, wouldn't it? Oh, mate, you know, you'd be gunning along with the door open with me pork pie hat on in camo, giving it the old, you want some? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I need to take the blue pill again, I think. <laughs> Anyway, we'll get a bit more on this leg and uh, get that weathered. Um, yeah, and start putting that around the posts there and the fittings on the um, ski mount. And I shall be doing the same on the skis as well. The skis themselves were, were wooden. But there are metal brackets on there and, and things like that. So they'll get a little bit of pigment on them. Just so that then when you, you scratch the paint off it exposes the wooden structure of the skis. As well as bits and pieces of the metal. So 
just gives it a bit of a weathered look. Do the same on the shock absorber mounts, like so. There you go. Another one bites the dust. And the eagle-eyed of you would have noticed that that piece I held up just now had some guns in it as well. Because I just wanted to test fit the guns on uh, one of the halves just to see how they went together. And then I shall shortly film the next one just so that you can um, see how the guns went in and were assembled. But I just wanted to do a little test run just for my own benefit because not knowing the construction of it greatly I just wanted to see how easy they went together for filming purposes so I'll just give the um, locking bars a coat of the pigment as well as well as the uh, central handle there like so and again they'll have a little bit of uh, paint on top of them and chipping and, and stuff like that so. and then probably do the grab handle as well whilst I'm there a couple of bits on the edge look at that let's put a clip on the edge of that one and we'll do the same on this as well and it just gives a little bit of uh, definition to a couple of the pieces and uh, that'll have a, a coat of like a, a very sort of dull holly whole red colour over it um, and that'll be chipped off just exposing the metal that I'm putting on now same with the hinges and it's just to give the guys inside a means of seeing the quick means of escape if something did go wrong you know they've got a nice big red handle there that they can turn and uh, yeah so let's have a look and bung a bit more uh, detail on some of these pulleys plates on the metal um, same with the sump covers the brake pads here they could do with a adenized finish so we might as well just go around and start picking out these little details at this stage because it will then start drying off and you can cobble a look out uh, out of one eye at it and as you're doing something else you know you might look at it and go oh that could just do with something there because yeah so I tend to go backwards and forwards between these bits and bobs if I'm honest but uh, just give the old linkages a bit of a dust uh, come underneath probably and look at doing the engine sump probably the rocker covers as well get them to have a coat and it's a little fiddly but when I first built it I kind of thought I would leave it all red but I had a bit of a change of mind midway through this this build so if you are going to highly paint your engine in different colours you might want to do it before you put it in the frame but maybe me I thought yeah I'm just going to leave it red oxide the whole lot and then yeah Fester changed his mind didn't he and made it unnecessarily difficult for himself so I'll just give this a good old going over with a bit of metal because then it'll be misted with um, an olive drab paint and then chipped see so it'll uh, again expose a lot of the metal underneath so there is a there is a, a plan to all of this so uh, yeah it's basically they've been instructed by their commanding officer to neat and everything up because they're getting visited so they've had a couple of tins of olive drab about and they've slathered it on and of course the paint's heated up and peeled back off again so that's the story to the interior anyway works for me but that's the beauty of these what if builds because it's your kit you know and, and at the end of the day you can paint it whatever you like because because they didn't exist you've got this almost artistic license of creativity that you can throw at these and that's why I like these ball tanks and a few people that have been watching these series 
uh, of builds that I've been doing on this have since gone out and bought their own and started PMing me asking me how the builds coming along and what stage they're at and you know if anyone else is building one you know PM me chuck me some pics I love to see your work and hopefully you know you're enjoying the build series and uh, at the end of this episode there'll be a list of consumables that I'm using on this build that have been kindly donated by eModels who um, this show's for and this build series is for should I say so if you're not sure what paints I'm using when the video ends it will flash up on screen all the paint numbers and colours that I'm using on this build so if you want to uh, build the same then uh, that's just something I've thrown in on the end of the video there so that you folks can uh, grab some consumables and um, build along with me so we'll just give this a little dust over to try and pick out some of the edges and I'm just flicking the brush across the surface just catching the edges randomly and it just leaves a very fine wispy deposit of paint and um, it seems to work for me on, on these certainly so we'll just do a bit of that and then we'll put some in the center of these pulleys and these will have a, a wash put in them when they're dry which will then pick out any uh, detail pieces so we're getting to that stage where things need to start drying so I'm going to wrap up now and just uh, have a little finish up at the bench here but again have a look at the uh, end of the video for the consumables that we need um, to complete these builds uh, pop along the way models have a looky loo uh, what they've got in store there if you want to grab a bolt tank whilst you're there do so um, the list of consumables is coming up so have a look at those add them to your your shopping list there are a great crew of people things have started to return back to normal now because the world is no longer on fire to the degree it was a few a few weeks back um, they will email you when your orders have been dispatched so give them a little bit of time uh, or a little more time than perhaps normally would but they have been really prompt I've, I've had orders come through promptly so until the next episode stay home stay safe keep well and i'll see you shortly bye bye for now